Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, beloved eternal friend, God, we bow to you all. Divine Masters, come into our hearts. May thy friendship permeate us as a sweet fragrance that reaches out to all souls. May we see thee in all whom we meet. May we feel thy friendship in all whom we meet. We are thine master. Work through us, serve through us, be a friend through us. Om Shanti Shanti, Amen. And welcome everybody to the, this uh, week's uh, Healing Sangha. And if you remember, some of you may have been tuned in uh, last month when uh, I joined it and we I took up the topic of friendship and because I think if we think we think of healing we think of naturally healing in terms of body but it's demon been demonstrated that healing is more than just the body it's the mind it's the soul it's a healing of, of our emotions it's our healing our feelings and it's been shown that people who have friends and have the ability to make friends are generally more healthy in all aspects of their life. There's a correlation there. We can't separate that out because the qualities it takes to uh, be healthy are the qualities also from a spiritual sense, from a mental sense, from emotional sense are also the qualities that allow us to naturally attract friends. Now, we're speaking of, but sometimes but when we, I think most of us, everybody here has some friends at least, but I know I have run across some people in life that they said they didn't. They didn't have friends. And I think that's a, that's a pity. It's a shame that somebody doesn't have that ability. But I do say that sometimes it's true. Friends are just spontaneous. If you can, if you can have connections from past lives, we just recognize them. And they're spontaneous. But I think it's Friendship uh, should be more than that. I think we need to cultivate. And I think this is if I were to title this discussion, it was how to cultivate friends. And as we last month when we discussed, I talked about the importance of friendship. And today I'd like to talk about that aspect, which is the cultivation of friends. Because if we cultivate friends, we're really we're cultivating the divine. Uh, on a, if we approach it from a spiritual level, the divinity itself, God must be cultivated. And God is there, of course, for it, waiting for us. And just in the same way, I think friends are out there waiting for us. And, uh, but we don't make the effort. And so you might say, and we have very short time, and there are many, many things we could say, because there are many. So I'm going to share with you a number of things. And to help us think about in our own life how we might cultivate friendship for our welfare. Now, it's also helpful on a more general way to other people, socially, other people were serving them. But for our benefit, take one or two things. And I think each of us can. I'm, you know, we never get to the point where we can't stop learning and introspecting. And so I'm going to share a few. So just see if you take some of these ideas and put them to use in your in your own lives. And I think we might start with, uh, as I said, sometimes it's spontaneous and we just wanna rekindle those old friendships from past lifetimes. And Master said that that's a very important thing because of the importance of friendship in our spiritual life in general. If we do recognize it, somebody from a past life, we have some you know, sympathetic karma with them. He says, make an effort to cultivate that what is sprouted already with a little bit of attention, we can bring it to fruition in this lifetime. And he says, in this way, it's, there's a satisfaction in doing that. And also it's very spiritually beneficial for us and also the other person. But I think there's often, we do have friends from old lives, but we don't always, from past lives, we don't recognize them. And sometimes, there's new friends because there's a uh, billions of people out there that, with whom we could make them make for new friends with. And as Sri Teshwar said to 
Paramahansa Yogananda, when he went to America, he says, wherever you go, don't, you know, because Master was going out all by himself. He says, wherever you go, you will find friends, friends from the past who will come to help you in your spiritual work and in your personal life in every way. And I think one of the first secrets is, that, is we have to make an effort, and that simply is to be friendly. I think that's where it starts. Make an effort to be friendly and to expand your circle. And even those people that seemingly you're not attracted to, because I have friends, and I think we all do if we look inside. I have a very good friend who's ex almost the opposite of me in so many ways. And, on, and you might say in passing, if we hadn't been in, a, in an environment where we could look beyond the surface, we would have never become good friends. But now we're very good friends, although we're very, very different. And I think actually, I think that's one of the things that makes us friends. We have this bond on some level, but because we're so, you know, different, that it, it, we play on those differences and it's sort of, and we're not attached to the fact that we're different. I think sometimes realize that humans biologically tend to, maybe for whatever evolutionary reason, we tend to notice our differences and we tend to want to just be with those people we like or we're similar with. And we somewhat insulate ourselves if we do it that way because maybe we're afraid or it's some primal instinct that you know wants us to be in the, to anybody that's different than us or different nationality, ethnic group, whatever, we kind of step back from them but this is uh unfortunately it's an unfortunate barrier they don't speak the same language and they look like well we have to go beyond that to be able to do that and i remember swami kriyananda once told asha and david praver who uh were living at ananda village at that time that he recommended he wanted us to start a community and a center in south in the san francisco south of san francisco in the silicon valley area and palo alto in that area and he he he, he asked them to go there and to start a center we had groups of people groups down there already and he says and they said well what what do we do sir and he gave them just pretty much of this piece of advice he says his advice was he says just go down there and make friends and really if you want to build Pune Center, and I hope many of you are watching, and I know you're not all from Pune, but Pune is hosting this Sangha. Uh, if you want to make friends and build the center in Pune, what do you do? You make friends with other people. And go down there and make friends is what he said, and that's what they did. And that's how they treated people. Not as, you know, they treated people as friends. And I think... I don't, many of you may have heard of the name Dale Carnegie. He is a man who, oh, a century ago, and I, his, he wrote a book probably 80 years ago. He's, it was, and I very much recommend this book. It's a little dated in the language, perhaps, and some of his examples, but it's a very good book. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Now, it sounds manipulative in that title, but it isn't. He's just giving sound, practical advice. Maybe he was a salesman. I don't know. I mean, but he was in business of some sort. How to make friends and how to just make friends for you to win friends. You see, notice he says win friends, not make friends. Win them to you. Attract them to you. And I think the golden rule applies. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. And some of the interesting things he said, and a piece of advice I'd like to give, Take some of these and see if you can put them into practice. He says, see everyone as a potential friend. And I think that's what Master did. Master said nobody crossed his path that did not have some karma from the past to make that happen. And so he saw them. Everybody is a potential friend. No one is my enemy. and Or you might even say no one is even a stranger. Maybe they're a stranger in this life, but somewhere from the past, Perhaps there's a connection there. You just haven't yet met your friend. <laughs> you made them your friend yet. Yet, you see. So, so you see everybody's potential friend, even the enemies. Underneath there, there's a friend lurking. And I think one of the problems that we have is we tend to judge people by their surface qualities. You have to learn to go beyond that. Get beyond the surface. 
don't prejudge anybody for whatever reason. Don't prejudge. Let them let who and what they are speak for itself and just accept it. Be neutral about that. And it, it, you might say that goes along with avoid too many expectations from other people. Can you accept other people as they are? Accepting people as they are, not according to your expectations of what they should be, what they should do, how they should act. And if they do meet your expectations, well, I'll give them the privilege of being my friend. What kind of attitude is that? You accept people, and when people feel that, you accept them. And this is one of the, I said I had this friend who's very, very different. I think that's what that person was warmed up to me is because I accept them, very eccentric fellow. But I accepted him and I kind of enjoyed it actually. But and then he relaxed, I relaxed. That's important, important part. It wasn't my job to straighten out anybody, you know, or to be overly obsessive, you know, some coworker. It's my, not my job to change their nature. They are who they are, accept that. And then when you can get, when you can do that and relax, you'll find that people naturally are attracted and they all oh, okay they won't that barrier is down what and of course you might say what vibration are you projecting right now is it a friendly inviting accepting vibration of other people as souls find common ground then you'll find you can you know when i meet somebody and i i mean i'm a public person i'm a private person who has to do public roles take up public roles from time to time go to dinners, meet people, and so on, which is not my nature, but I've always made it a point. If I'm meeting somebody, talk with them, what can I find common grounds with this person? Talk to them. Maybe they like sports. Well, okay, I could like sports too. Maybe they like books. Maybe they like travel. Maybe they like whatever it might be. You can find common ground if you make an effort. See, you have to make an effort. You have to cultivate take a long view. It has to be somewhat important to you, not vital necessarily. In long run, it's vital to have friends, I think. But each individual, if you, you try to find an opening, and if it flowers, good. If it doesn't, well, maybe next time. How to get started? Be friendly. Uh, cultivate friendliness and add it, and which is based on a willingness to reach out. To others. I could say start by being courteous. Practice it. Your relatives. <laughs> to your immediate relatives, your co-workers. When you can do that to the people that are regularly in your environment, regularly, by necessity perhaps, then you can begin to develop a habit and be, be kind and courteous to everybody. Build as masters. Master had, a, had something. He said, build an altar of understanding on kind words. Reach out with that. Swamiji was such a good example that way. And many stories there are. Some other time we'll tell them. But uh, uh, he was attractive that way. Don't give your bad moods to others. That's like giving somebody a wormy apple to eat. You know, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I got a bad mood. I'm going to share it. <laughs> that's not that's not a recipe for success. Be a listener rather than somebody to talk, 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 talk. This is how I feel. This is what I think. This is it. This, you know, you know, people like that. Don't be that person. Be a listener. Ask questions. Get to be interested in what the other people or person has to say. I say seriously interested. You can feign it a little bit or, you know, fake it. But it's, you know, I mean, sometimes you have to do that. It, it's totally, you know, impersonal situation to get started. But ideally, your actually should be interested. And people like to talk to people who are interested in what they have to say. I mean, it's just the way life is. Other people's welfare, in other words, comes first. Let the other person shine. And then that's a, that's a mark of selflessness, which is absolutely important, vital between friends. Be selfless to the friend. Said from, It's built, you know, I actually, Master went this far, and he said, friendship is built on being mutually useful. Friends are useful. 
And if you want to be a friend, depends. think of ways you can be of service to another person. Share with that person. Appreciate likes and dislikes. Things you don't, you know, viva la difference, as they might say in France. Some, uh, some people have trouble with this. You know, they just can't get beyond their dislikes or their uh, or this distaste for something that may manifest through another person yeah well work on it show you might say how do you work on it show appreciation well that person a little odd but i appreciate oddness you know friendships you know but you don't want to be too familiar paramount yogananda said friendship sleeps or dies in familiarity because you become familiarity leads to contempt is what how master put it so you be non-demanding your friendship is freely given you can't demand friendship from anybody you just you can't people say i demand your respect you can't demand respect i can respect you or not respect you but you can't demand it i can give you respect i can give you love you can't demand love. You must win it. So it is with us. We must win friends. We must win respect. We must win the love of other people. Magnet magnetism. Be honest, non-deceptive, truthful, open, letting other people into your life a little bit, accepting others as they are. You know, in a sense, there's a certain vulnerability of that to let other people into your life. Well, you have to trust. Friendship is built on trust, respect. Other people be there for them when they need it, when they arrive. Be reliable, in other words, when they when they need something, they can rely on you. Seeking, and I think this is a good one for us on the spiritual path. Seeking soul progress together, spiritual friends, a meditation buddy. Some, you know, I have uh, people that I do certain things with. I I like to do certain sports. I have a group of friends. We do that sport. Another group of friends will do that sport. I have another group of friends. We meditate together. Long meditations. We have a long meditation once a week. Uh, there's about eight or nine of us, and we and I don't interact much with them other times. But that's just, and that's something we see each other and we recognize that uh, it's part of my our group there. And and smooth the way, as Master says in his poem, one for another and. Ask another person for help. Swami's gave this piece of advice is if you want to make a friend, ask him to help you. That's very, very true. That's how I came to know Swamiji through that. Generous spirit, be embraceive, and finally, let's say, be loyal. And of course, forgiving is part of that loyalty, goes with that loyalty. So Sri Teshwar said to Master, wherever you go, you will find friends. You build a network of people that way to help you. And it's a family. And when you have that, you find your health and everything starts to go right. When you're, you, you, and more than important than everything, you feel a certain contentment and happiness. And uh, this is really your ability to build friends and to win the hearts of other people is an excellent measure for yourself, don't measure other people, but for yourself, you look in the mirror, it's a good measure of your spiritual stature, of your spiritual progress. So those are a few, you know, obviously I gave you so many that we could go into depth in any any one or two of them. And, and then maybe there's a whole list there, you know, uh, Bhavani, you could give class series on, on this, uh, going down all of these different points with Moshmi helping you right there. <laughs> and Tushar, I see you, you too. Get out there, make friends, and let's talk about it and have a little class series about it. And so anyway, and there, and I say, I, everybody I see here, I'm looking out here, I see, I see Suvarna, I see Alona, and, uh, and all of you, get together and do a little series on this. Let's be friends together. And uh, Pramila too, my very, very good friend. So let's send this vibration out into the ether blessing the world that we might all as a community of souls, and especially us as devotees, as a community of devotees, we reach out to others in a spirit of friendship and good health. So let's mentally put our attention at the point between the eyebrows, sending this vibration out into the world. May 
the beloved, the divine mother be the divine friend to all. May we all open our hearts to that love and join hands together to reach out to share that love with all. Rub our hands together and let's send this vibration out. Oh.